Okay, I think this is on. All right, okay, I'm gonna start with the list. I'm gonna get it done quick. I need to look up there, yes, all right. So, starting off with a sheet of watercolor paper. It's, hi Susan, it's uh, 22 by 30, and you can hear it, it's thick. Hi guys, I see you coming up. Um, it's heavy duty, it's 300 pound. Don't get the 140 pound, get the 300 pound. That's the first thing on the list. I'm gonna do another video, you'll see how to cut it, how we're gonna deal with it later. These are just, this is just a, um, a piece of poster board. It's what I use to protect my, uh, my desk and stuff, but you can use whatever, newspaper, whatever. All right, drawing pencils. So I have a set of drawing pencils that are very old. See those? Very old. This is a very old tin. Um, for this, I typically, let me get in the frame. I typically use an H pencil. Mm, there we go. H. Can you see that? Yes. Um, if you buy a set, you'll see that it starts off with this um, 8B. I don't have my glasses on. 8B that's soft and dark, and it moves this way. If you're lucky and you find an individual set of, uh, or individual, <laughs> hi, an individual pencil, F, H, and 2H, any of those will work, okay? It doesn't have to be an entire set. You're only gonna use light pencils. Okay. A, where'd it go? Oh no, it was just here. Oh, here. <laughs> a Draftsman mini brush, not necessary, okay? This is not a necessary thing, I like it. It's like a six inch brush, it's really, really soft. And I use it to um, brush off colored pencil, um, erasing crumbs, that kind of stuff. Do not use your hand because it will smear. And do not, and I know this from firsthand experience, don't blow on it because you'll end up with spit on your, <laughs> accidentally, and it won't happen every time, but every so often you end up with spit on there, it'll be kind of horrifying, okay. Draftsman brush, you don't need that, but there it is. Is there anything I need to know? No. Okay, carbon paper. Your carbon paper package will not look like my carbon paper package because mine's from probably 1972. Um, it is though just a package of paper. It's got carbon on one side. You can, it's noticeable. Um, which side is the side you're supposed to be using. That is a necessary thing. Okay, let's see. A pencil sharpener. We all know what pencil sharpeners look like. I just got a new one. This is the same one I've had before. Um, so you can get an electric one. You can get um, a battery operated one, you can get a hand one, whatever you want. If you are local and you're coming to class, I'll have two of these in class, but um, you might want a battery one, you know, for your own little space. So, whichever one you want. That one, I think, was maybe 24 bucks. It was not very expensive. Okay, the next thing is an eraser. An eraser, just a white eraser. Don't get pink. Pink leaves little pink smears on your paper and you don't want that. This is just a Pentel white eraser. You can get them anywhere, probably even your grocery store. They also come in a stick and like that. And they go up and down. I like these for little areas and the big ones for the big areas. Uh, retra retractable utility knife or an exacto knife. I particularly like the retractable ones if you're going to get a box cutter type thing just because you know safety and all so that's easy um so this mat i said before you don't need it i happen to have one so i use it it is called an exacto self-healing mat it's a pretty good size um they're great to have for all kinds of reasons, but 
you could also use a piece of heavy cardboard. You know, open up that last Amazon box that you got and use that. That would work too. Looking at my list, a wood or metal yard stick is exactly what it sounds like. I've had a, um, what does that say? Bring them on camera. No. <laughs> okay, I'm looking at the little messages down here. Um, wood or metal yardstick. I had a wooden yardstick for probably 20 years and I've used it and it's been fine. They're very cheap and easy to get and you probably get them at Michael's. You could probably get them at, um, you know, Lowe's or Home Depot. What I found, I don't know if it's because this is maybe sharper. I don't know that it would be sharper than an X-Acto knife, but for whatever reason, using this, this uh, retractable box cutter knife, um, I've actually started cutting pieces of my wood. Um, I always want to call it a ruler. It is a yardstick. Um, I, used, I was starting to cut them off, started cutting slices off the edge without meaning to. So I found this on Amazon. It was like 10 bucks. I'm very excited to have it. But, you know, it's the little things in life. Okay, poster mounting putty. This is probably those, some of you may know, some of you may not. This is what it looks like. It can be white, it can be yellow, it could be blue. Maybe there's other colors. It's kind of hard when you first start messing with it, but as it warms up, it gets softer. And what this is used for is when you're using colored pencils, you can't erase. There are times when you want, you know, you decide, oh, I don't like that color at all, and you need to erase it. You don't erase colored pencil, it just smears it. So you actually just push like this. And, um, and that pulls the, the color up. And that's what these are used for. So these pins, these Micron pins, this is what they look like, okay? I have asked that you guys get a zero one and a zero five. A zero five is about the size of a Sharpie marker, like a thin Sharpie marker. And you can just have a thin Sharpie marker. That's fine. You don't need these. These, I've had these around. I like them a lot. Um, they are archival quality. This work is not archival work. But when I do fine art, I do like to do, you know, make sure it lasts forever and ever and ever. Um, this is an O1. And so an O1 is, let's see how close I can get, is very thin. You see how tiny that is? Hopefully that's not blurry. Um, and they even make a 005, and that one is so thin that you almost can't even put it on camera. I've already tried. On my um, angel horse piece, where there's the horse with the big wings and the, the, per, the woman sitting in front, you can see on her arm she's got writing, and on that I use that 005 size. It's, um, it's just super, super narrow, super tiny. These are not necessary at all. You can also get just a regular, what are these called? Again, no glasses. Ugh. Ultra fine Sharpie in black. That works too. Um, if you happen to find a whole set and you want to have a whole set, you can get them in a rainbow of colors. So that works for that. Um, also, nothing again that you need, but you can also get regular Sharpie markers. They come in poster sizes now too, I think. This is the normal one that everybody's used to. Um, but the poster size, see that one? Yeah. The poster size are huge. I don't have any of those and I don't, I don't know that I would use them. But all you need is one thin black one. If you tend to like to use markers more than you would paint, then, um, then markers, then you should have markers. Uh, let's see, Tombow. So this is a Tombow marker. It sounds like it's some specific thing. I suppose that it is, but it's, it's not so, it, I like it, you don't need it. Um, it is, this is what it looks like. That's the brush side. It has a pin on the other side. I don't ever use that side. It's specifically, what I use it for is flesh tones in people. Um, you can use a single layer and get a light skinned person. You can use multiple layers of this pen and get a darker skinned person. Um, you can also use this as a base um, for, um, 
for even darker. So like my son is from Ethiopia. So a darker, even a black person, then you would use, I would use this with a lot of um, color pencil on top of it to darken it up even further. You don't need this. I will show you how to do skin tones in colored pencil. Um, and you can also mix paint too. That would be fine as well. That's that. Tombow paint. Okay, so I gave you a specific brand just because it was easier to give you a brand. I use all kinds of brands of craft paint. Mm, this is Martha Stewart. And um, in black and white, I get the tip, the typically get the bigger ones for black and white because I use a lot of, I use a lot of paint, I paint a lot. Um, you could also get, you could get, gosh, there's, there's just a bazillion brands out there. So buy whatever you want, whatever makes you happy. So you need a black and white and you need primary colors as a, at a minimum. So that's blue, yellow, and red. So a blue would be like a mid-tone blue, yellow, same, same goes, not a dark, not a light. Um, Delta Ceramco uses, I don't know if they still do this. I, I don't know how old these are, so, but not horribly, horribly old, but see how it says opaque on there? So if you have a choice of red, um, I think they have them, in, they might even have them in blue. Um, if you have a choice of red or, excuse me, opaque or translucent paint for this, you need opaque. You don't want uh, see-through paint. You want it to be solid and heavy duty. Can you see them? Okay, good. Thanks, Susan. Um, so make sure you're looking for the opaque. If you get to the store, and you will, and there will be a gazillion types of paint and a gazillion types of colors, ask somebody if you want. Uh, I'm happy with this brand. I'm happy with the Martha Stewart brand. Um, there are less expensive brands if you want to try them. It's fine. <coughs> Excuse me. So... You have to have black and white, and you have to have these three primary colors, um, the red and yellow and blue. And then if you want to buy other colors, then do. There, there's tons of them. If you know that you always use pink, or you always use a light blue, and you don't feel like mixing it, we can mix any of the colors we need from those colors. But if you want to just have them on hand, then that's fine too. Okay, matte gel medium. So this is used, well, I guess I should show it to you. There you go. This is a fairly inexpensive brand. I got it at Michael's. It's called Artist Loft Matte Gel Medium. Um, it is used for all kinds of things. Artists use it to, I can't get it undone. Artists use it to um, extend their paint. Um, they use it to add some texture to their paintings. When I say extend, I mean extend drying time. Um, this is what it looks like on the inside. It's a, kind of like it's not really like paste. It's like a thick Elmer's. Using Elmer's is not the best idea or a glue stick because they end up cracking off and, and peeling off over time. Uh, palette knives. So I have palette knives, so I use them. You do not need them. I've got a whole little set of them, see? And um, I use them to mix paint. In reality, they are used for, well, mixing paint, but also for actually painting. Um, if you've ever watched Bob Ross, um, he's, he specifically uses palette knives often as a way to paint his happy little trees. You know, they actually take and, and you know, mix up paint and then he scrapes, 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 and then he uses it to paint trees, little lines of trees. They, then you just, you just wipe them off, it's easy. But you can also use popsicle sticks, AKA craft sticks, that works. You could use, you could use the end of a paintbrush to mix paint, that would be fine. You could use well, whatever you want, you know, an old knife. Um, I wouldn't use your fingers just because of chemicals and stuff, so not so much that. Um, okay, then the colored pencils. I'm trying to be fairly quick. So you don't have to watch this forever and ever. I'm almost, I'm almost to the end. So the colored pencils, is that right? Yes, colored pencils, here's an older set. You want to get the Prismacolor Premier and not the student pencils. Student pencils don't, aren't the same quality. Um, this is a set of 24 and it's, let's see, 
What about flow troll? I don't know flow troll. What is it? Oh, it was an extender? It might be an extender. It sounds like it might be an extender. So, uh, Rachel, if it's an extender, that's fine. As long, but it needs to be, you can try it. Try it and see, right? We don't know. Um, maybe look it up online and see if anybody ever uses it in collage. And that's because that's what, did I say that that's what this is for? That's what this is for, is for glue in our case. Um, so these pencils, not student, you need premieres. They are, I have, I, you know, being a colored pencil artist, I have a lot, many, many, many um, brands and sets of colored pencils. This one works well for what we're doing. It's the cheapest one you can get. They're very waxy. They have a lot of deep color. Um, and you can get them in 24. 24 would be the, the smallest one. Um, but uh, what else? But you can give them bigger sets too. So, you know, if you've got the money and you want a bigger set, buy a bigger set. Um, okay. I don't think there's anything else about that. Brushes. All right, so I have this set of brushes that I use to lay down large areas of water. This is the set. They're very, very soft. Um, but you only really need the two inch. This is what it says on the side large area artist brush okay um you could also use a kitchen sponge you could use a foam brush there's lots of options um this is what i use i don't think they're very expensive and if you buy a set that's fine this is the one i probably use the most all right well, that's the first one and then natural bristles so that's you probably really want that all right, then we've got the other, the other ones. So this one is a 10-0. Hold on, I'll turn it around so you can see it. Can you see that? So the number is right here. So the number on all the brushes will be on um, the handle. And that's a 10-0, and you can see that it's very, very tiny. Do a lot of tiny work in this, and so a nice little tiny brush is nice. So that's a 10 slash zero. This is a two slash zero. It's the next size for us. I'm sure there's something in between um, and you know, in the store, but that's the size we're gonna be using. Anything, and, and it doesn't have to be exact. If you find something that looks kind of like that, get that. Um, so that's the next size. This next size is just a zero. You can kind of see what they look like side by side, okay? And yeah, so just go to the small art, art, art the, the brush section and look in the small, you know, the small ones and you'll find these, this would be easy enough. This is a fan brush, you don't need one. This is a 2-0 a two fan brush, you don't need this. Um, I have it, it's nice to have, but you don't need it. But you know, if you want it, it's about what? half an inch, maybe a half an inch across. We can, we can find other ways to do what we need to do. This one is a 10, a size 10 filbert. The filbert is the shape of the brush. This is used for when we do big uh, watercolor areas. So I meant to say about that, this paint, this type of paint, the reason I use this is because it's cheap it's easy to find. You can find it in all kinds of places. You can find this in Walmart, or at least you know some type of this in Walmart, um, and probably even Target. Um, and so we're going to thin this out and use it, and thin it out with water and use it as a watercolor wash, and we're going to leave it as is and use it as just regular paint. Um, and that's why it's nice. It's not, it's not fine art paint by any means. Okay, so we've got all those brushes. And then the last little bit is just things that you already have at home, you know, scissors, the painter's tape. We're gonna use painter's tape to take your, I'll send you a PDF of the artwork, of the line drawing of the artwork. And you're going to take the PDF, let's say it was this, you're gonna print it off. You're gonna put your um, or carbon paper behind it and you're gonna tape it to your paper and painter's tape pulls off super easy. It doesn't pull any of the paper away with it. Uh, heavy duty paper or foam plates so the paint doesn't soak through. Um, a roll of paper towels, 
any sort of plastic glass cup or m old mug or whatever you've got to, um, so you've got uh, water for your paintbrushes at your table. And you know, maybe you'd like some crayons. Why not, right? Maybe you'd like some magazines for collage. A good, good magazines for collage are often things like the um, O Magazine or Yoga Magazines or um, that type of thing where they have a lot of inspirational stuff in them. Um, if you're looking for pretty pictures, you know, that kind of thing, then, um, yeah, I don't know. You have to look maybe a photography magazine, maybe a National Geographic. It could be all kinds of things. So I think that's it. Is there, do you guys have any questions at all about any of that? I will watch and see, does anything come up? Rachel, did I ask, answer your question? I hope, if you're still there. Okay, all right, that's it. If you have any questions, you know how to reach me. Um, oh, acrylic paint in tubes by Arteza. Yeah, that's fine too. Yeah, whatever you have is perfectly fine. I mean, I wouldn't use super expensive watercolors and tubes on this, um, but you could if you really wanted to. And I wouldn't use, okay, good, thanks, Rachel. Um, and I wouldn't use, uh, I wouldn't use oil paint on this at all because we're gonna be using a lot of water. So, all right, so if you have any questions, um, send me a PM on Facebook or um, post on, on Facebook and let me know if you have anything else. Okay, thanks for watching. See you guys. Bye.